Hey everyone, Pinch Out here. And on today's episode of Pinch Out's Garage, we're gonna do something a little different, a little bit more on the JDM side. <laughs> uh, we actually have a Subaru right over here, WRX, that we're gonna bag. And so we're gonna walk you guys through and how to do the entire process on how to bag a Subaru WRX here at Pinch Out's Garage. So let's get to work. Oh, and there's Ian, by the way. First things first, let's get to know uh, pretty much our Subaru and how we jack it up and pretty much and where we can put our jack stands for safety number one. And then we'll walk around and do an inspection on what we have to do to actually get started on this procedure. Um, this whole entire car is gonna be bagged with a full airlift three piece suspension um, performance setup. So we're gonna do a dual compressor, single tank, uh, we're going to do the controller and everything. So we're going to walk you guys on how to install the entire kit. Um, it's not that hard, but it's very meticulous. And you got to be very, very, how can we say this, patient with a lot of the certain things you're going to have to set up prior before the car goes on the road. So let me show you what's going on. So on the front suspension here, we have a typical, a typical McPherson strut set up. So we got three bolts on the top. Looks like they're 13s, probably 12s. Down below, we have our two bolts here and a brake line and a sensor right over here as well. So these are all gonna be unbolted so the whole entire assembly comes right out. So back down here to the front suspension. Uh, like I was saying, um, these uh, parts are gonna be held together by a couple components. Very, very simple, very, very, very basic design. I love it. Makes it easy to, to do the job. Um, so you have two bolts here that hold the, the front strut. Make sure you take off the brake line bolt here and pull the little clip here for this wire. Uh, more likely it's the brake sensor wire or ABS sensor. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, that's pretty much the, the front in a nutshell. That's pretty much it. Well, well, again, we'll walk you through it, but I'm just showing you guys the quick breakdown. Now for the rear, it's a little bit more complicated, but not much more. Um, so you have a strut set up as well and it's held right here by one nut or one bolt here and then we might have to unbolt the sway bar one thing though if your car has automatic headlight uh, adjustment which is this guy right here in the back make sure this is unbolted prior to doing anything else in your car because you don't want to overextend it or bend it and cause some damage and you know pay a decent price to get that fixed um now for these guys on, on the back, they're also mounted by two bolts on inside the trunk. So remember when you guys are working on this, to get down here, pull the entire uh, trunk cover out until you're down to the wheel well. And then over here, you'll see there's two bolts right here um, that hold pretty much that shock in place. Same on the right hand side that is the suspension in a nutshell now we got to figure out how to remove all this and install the new bags first uh so we're going to do a quick breakdown on the entire kit of the suspension uh, of what comes in the car uh, for your airlift suspension that's in all those boxes over there and then we're going to start removing everything in here because knowing what you have prior to taking everything apart is extremely vital making sure you have the right amount of stuff before you do all the work. Because what can happen is you might have the wrong front strut, you might have a uh, night off airline, you might not have water traps or a relay. So we're gonna break down the entire kit for you prior to installing it in your car. All right, so now that we have everything on box, let's go with the quick breakdown. Very, very straightforward. The one in that box comes the manifold and the controller and all the wiring you need for that. 
Then you have your main loom or your harness is what we call it. Airline, water trap. You have your steel lines here for your bags. Uh, they already come pre-treated for a, what's it called, like a Teflon material so it doesn't leak. Spanner wrench for the threaded body. These are the front bags. Our two air compressors. Uh, other steel lines for the rear bags. Uh, we have our dampening adjusters right over there. Uh, secondary harness for the second air compressor. All the needed materials for mounting and installing your air compressors. Zip ties and whatnot. Uh, the front bags have all the hardware already ready. Camber plates built into them. So that, that is pretty much the entire kit in a nutshell when they ship you a box like that to your house. <laughs> so you get all these boxes and it freaks you out. It's not a lot. What is difficult, or I'm gonna say uh, more on the tedious side, is figuring out where you wanna run your controller and your wiring for pretty much your entire setup. Uh, airline on this car is actually very, very nice because we have uh, underbelly panels, which we can take off and run line underneath and put them back underneath there and keep them protected from weather. Really, really nice. Uh, the underbelly panels also uh, cover up exposed areas where we can run line inside of the car instead of making any holes to the car itself so it's really nice so we're going to get to work and we're going to show you guys how to install the air suspension <laughs> thank you so um the suspension is held together by two 18s uh you're going to need a 12 for the brake line and then just this little guy right here is held by just pinching it together and it comes right off on the top you have three 12s unbolt it uh then Hold it with your hand if you can. If not, you have to smack them out. Sorry, turn your volume down. Ratchet it up. It might not come in and out, yeah. They're not under tension, that's why it's kind of weird. Oh, they're camber bolts. That's why. so one thing you guys are going to know ahead of time when you guys take these out um you're going to do an alignment big time <laughs> okay. so just give you guys a heads up on that an alignment is going to be needed after you do this whole suspension Oh no, it should come out now. Just rusted in place. So one thing be careful with guys is make sure that the brake line does not get tugged on uh, when you take the suspension off. Sometimes these uh, calipers can fold really far forward. I mean the spindle can fold really far forward and it can yank on your brake line. But that is the front assembly already removed. Um, you guys can see right here, the three twelves that hold it are right here on top. Um, there is an alignment mark. I'm just curious on where it is. Uh, we'll look it up in just a moment and see if there's an alignment marking for these. But that's how you remove the front strut though. All right, so here's your uh, front strut. Now, one thing you guys gotta understand, they are labeled for left and right. A uh, quick way to find it, right down here, that's left, and then obviously the other one's going to be right. Now for installation, they are uh, required to go in one specific way on the top hat. So when you guys are going to install these, make sure when you install them that the top hat here uh, aligns correctly on top for your camber option. Because if not, you have some serious toe or some weird caster function. So. Uh, they do go in one way, but you, they can be installed in three different orientations. But there is only one way that's the correct way where this lines up correctly for camber. And we'll show you guys that in just a moment. Um, again, as you remove the entire uh, suspension using very, very minimal tools for the front, uh, just remember that uh, what we did. Uh, 
you can right now if you want to install the main line it's your choice I'm not going to do it. It's more annoying to get it in. I'm going to do it after this is installed. Uh, one thing that we did have an issue, and it was a big issue actually, the actual uh, spanner nut here that sits here to hold the, the body was on way too hard. Um, we actually had to hit it off with a hammer and chisel. Uh, the spanner wrenches did not work. Uh, we actually were stripping them. So probably a big heads up to airlift. I probably recommend put these on a little bit less tight prior to shipping these because uh, we damaged almost two of these little I guess um, spots to turn it and just due to the fact that we couldn't even turn it so I had to hit it off with a chisel and a hammer and a three pound little hammer as well by the way so right now we're gonna get over here and install this and we'll show you guys on top and how it's gonna look so we are here and you guys can see this again orientation only has one way to go on uh so the actual camber plate will work as a camber plate uh you'll notice that when you guys try to put it in every time you put it on it's in a different orientation again only one way for this can go on correctly once you have it on hand tighten these do not torque them to spec yet we're going to work our way back down and you're going to need a jack uh, with the jack going to help you push the actual knuckle up to get this uh, knuckle to line up with the strut and get it in if you don't what's going to happen you're going to try to manhandle this and lift the whole entire thing by yourself and you just get pretty tired doing it and it's just more time consuming than doing it should be so when you guys are getting it going make sure push it into the actual knuckle and then work your way up with the jack popping it ever so slowly um, there's, oh, that the camera oh, oops. So, there's two different bolts by the way guys there's a camber bolt uh, that goes in on the top and then there's a standard bolt that goes on the bottom remember that because that's super super important when you guys are doing this job uh, to make sure the bolt orientation um, top and bottom and the difference so you guys can see that this one has like a little hump inside of it and that's the one that goes up here and then the one that's just straight just goes on the bottom if it'll let me get it in there or does it go the other way did it go this way? Oh yeah, yeah, it did go that way, huh? Yeah. They both went that way. So this opposite ours. Yeah. Okay, so you do have a nut with a washer. That's the top one. And then the one without the washer is the bottom. Now, whenever you guys are doing this, just remember, uh, after your bags are done, you have to align the car. You can't just bag it and drive away. <laughs> the car is gonna require an alignment big time uh, after this job is completely done. So right now I'm putting back the brake line, which is held by a 12, and then the little sensor that goes on the other side, which just clips right back on with the with the provided tab that's on here. Look up your manufacturer torque specifications for the knuckle. Same with the strut top. Get that going. Right now, I'm just gonna put these on tight, but I'm not gonna torque them down yet. And the only reason I'm doing that is just so I can make sure I get everything else going before I do anything with this. 
So that's it for your front. Um, up here, again, with the issue that we had last time on the other side, you're gonna need a chisel and a hammer, grab a corner, and you gotta hit these off. Because that was the issue that we had earlier to kind of get these broken loose. Once you have it loose, you can do it by hand. But Airlift put these on way too tight. And the reason why we need to do that is so we can spin the bag over like that so we can get the main metal line in here and then turn it back. Oh, thank you. So thread the line in by hand, just a little bit. You need a 15 millimeter wrench and it since already has a, a sealant on it, just tighten it on. Now these are MPT, I believe they're quarter inch or half inch MPT lines. Um, so they automatically start tightening halfway through since it's a MPT line. So no need to go all the way down. Once they get really, really snug, just give it a nice little tug and you're done. They're not meant to go all the way down. They taper pretty much on the way in. And that's it. And then we turn the bag back to where we had it. Because we want the airline to be facing the body, not you. And what I'm going to be doing is going to be feeding it right behind this main brake line right here. Because we're going to be making a little, we're going to use some hangers and hang it there and there. So it's out of the way, preventing any type of damage to the line itself. We don't want it to move up and down. So we're going to give enough slack here and here. So the line moves left and right with the bag as you drive. Because they will... They will move the bag moves as you turn so you want to prevent any type of rubbing as much as possible during uh your installation uh the problem with bags when people improperly install them they not even kidding months after you install them they leak uh people have them start leaking or literally a line will explode due to the fact that you have to make sure you find the preventative measures of finding what's going to be an issue and on these cars this is on these bags these are the this is the biggest issue you're going to have is the steel line even though it's steel braided you can rub a hole into it and you can cause a premature failure and have a leak and have a leak while you're driving which is what you don't want so we're going to get little uh, uh i believe these are three eighths or quarter inch lines and we're gonna again we're gonna put hangers right here and here and that'll hold them in place while we run the line down and underneath the car as long as you don't have extremely deep wheels you should be perfectly fine um, for that portion so remember your torque specifications for the bottom and the top you're done same with your line we're done with the front we're now we're gonna work our, uh, our way on towards, towards the back so now we're working on the rear bags and we already got this side installed we know exactly what needs to be done but one thing on the driver's side that's extremely vital for you guys to remember um the rear uh it's hard to show you guys right there depending on your car if you have headlight adjusters these are the headlight adjuster sensor be very careful with this um unbolt it if you're worried about it we didn't need to unbolt it but you know i would recommend doing it anyways um, to be safe, you overextend the control arm just in case because you can damage this and your headlights won't adjust correctly. Uh, if you don't have it, then don't worry about it. Plain and simple. Um, you'll see how we have the airline oriented on the way out and versus coming in on this side. Um, we'll show you guys the reason why for that, but we want you guys just to know, I give you guys a heads up. Make sure the airline is facing in, or I mean facing out towards the brake and under the brake line. And then we're gonna zip tie it right here out of, uh, against the the brake line and we're gonna use follow this brake line down here 
and then we're gonna run it, uh, run the airline up through the body over here and back into the trunk. I know it's kind of counter intuitive, but we have to go this route uh, to prevent the airline from being damaged uh, by rubbing anything in general. The only thing that we are mostly concerned for is this metal brake line that has an edge to it right here, the bracket. Uh, we might, it might dig a hole into this, so we might have to figure out like a rubber grommet to put on here to absorb the rubbing impact right here. But that's pretty much it. So let's get to work on installing the rear bags. Plain and simple. Leave the top bolts on for the moment. We're gonna go down here. On the suspension, you're gonna need a 17 and a 15 socket and ratchet. Uh, and wrench, I'm sorry, uh, for these two guys right here. You need to unbolt the sway bar and the lower shock right down below. Uh-huh. All right, so to get the rear strut out on the top where we showed you guys earlier where the two bolts are, untake the nuts off completely. Don't worry about it, but do not let the strut drop. It won't drop uh, immediately. When it's until you start pushing down on the caliper, but on both both sway bars on both sides this way you can do both bags super quick and efficient the sway bar has a lot of tension on both sides so you want to make sure you don't um damage anything so take off uh, both sides of the sway bar that way the tension is released and it makes it easier for uh getting the new bag installed uh, unbolt the lower bolt of the strut here Okay, and that's held by the 17. And then what you need to do, if you have a friend with you, have them step on the caliper and push down. And that will give you the play you need to pull the strut up and then swing it over to the right or the left, whichever way is easy for you, uh, out of the control arm and then pull straight down. And then it should let you pull the whole strut out like that as one piece, just like that. I couldn't show you how to do it because we were both in the camera's way, so it wouldn't have been very helpful but it's just again unbolt it pull the bolts out and then step on here okay you can see i can push down on it by myself but when this is jammed in it it gets stuck in there so you gotta push down and then wiggle it out left and right uh, to get it out all right so now the rear bag has to go in uh, before that make sure you install your little dongle here on top of the other little adjuster down here at the bottom so you can adjust your dampening inside the car. Um, yeah, it's kind of a stupid in how they did this. I don't know why they just didn't make it a little bit long taller and just let you adjust it, but this is how they want it. They want you to cut it shorter. I might do that. I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm not there to that point, but they want you to cut it a lot shorter. Uh, I don't know yet what I'm gonna be doing when I get to that point, but this is how it's gonna look before you install it. Um, airline uh, the main airline is already installed we're gonna have that facing us during the installation sorry so now we're gonna go down and in uh, your buddy up top is gonna get get my nuts and he's gonna hold them for me while I install Hold on. There we go. There you go. Now, all we're doing is just finger tight on top. We don't need to really need them snug right now. Um, not super important. What really is important is that this airline is on this side of the car. And remember how we talked about the airline going under the brake line here and over. Uh, this way we feed it over here, just like that. And again, this airline has to be facing uh, towards us, not the back. Uh, we're gonna be figuring out where to run airline, actual airline into the trunk afterwards. Uh, once that's done, make sure you have your jack with you so you can compress the rear and uh, get the bolts installed. So when you guys jack up the car, make sure you have a little screwdriver to pretty much force align the, the holes for the sway bar and the strut here. Uh, Cause if you don't, it's what's gonna happen is that 
it's gonna be really really difficult to get the shock and the and the sway bar lined up correctly to get the bolts in but once you with the flat screwdriver cram it in line it up and then put your bolts in and then tighten everything down uh hand tight we're not going to torque spec it yet uh just hand tighten just that way we make sure everything is lined up correctly and then once you know for a fact everything is where you want it then torque it to spec uh down here and on the top and uh, to do that just remember you need your jack down here on the control arm and just push up and down until you get it where you need it and then start lining everything up correctly um, you'll see over here we ran the line again facing forward and going over and over here so we found a couple body grommets that we want to work with in just a moment um, I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna be doing I don't know if I'm gonna drill a hole into the body yet or am I gonna use the actual factory grommets I'm more likely going to be using factory grommets. I'm just trying to make sure before I do that, um, that I can find maybe another spot somewhere that I can use for uh, running airline into the car. Uh, but now we have front and rear uh, suspension already installed. Now it comes to the fun stuff is running airlines. Airline is probably the most difficult thing in this process of this car is to run airline safely efficiently and to the point where you can actually pull it out pop in a new one and be able to service it if for any reason if it fails uh, one of the biggest issues with air suspension is rot since it uh, the airline is made of nylon uh, nylon plastic it will rot over time and get really hard and brittle so keeping it safe from the elements is a big big key factor of your main maintenance on your lines. I tend to replace my airlines every two years. It's super cheap. It runs about 30 to 50 bucks to run all new airlines. So it's a very small investment every through two, two years. Um, the fittings that I'm gonna be using are not gonna be provided by Airlift. I go above and beyond when I do fittings on these. I don't like using Airlift fittings to, since they tend to leak a lot. Uh, since they're plastic fittings, we're gonna be using full on brass nickel plated fittings that will last pretty much the entire life of the air suspension without a single hesitation. Um, very, very good investment, but it's not cheap. You're looking at about 15 to 20 bucks a fitting. So make sure before you buy your fittings, you put it in your budget as well uh, during this entire build process. All right, guys? All right, now we're back. So we finished the car. And you guys can see there's an airline right there. We're gonna show you how we routed it. So from there, straight down. Now you can copy this on both sides. See how the line is routed and we use a mounting, uh, mounting tabs quarter inch all the way down underneath the car. And then what we did is once we got towards the rear, because the rear is what's challenging on these cars uh, due to the fact that you don't have a lot of sp spots where you can cause some serious damage. So um, we're at the airline. So we wanted to make sure we didn't have any issues with the airline airing out. So if you follow this line here, and you'll see how we're routed back here. We're gonna lift up the rear for you guys right now so you guys can see how it looks underneath the car um, by the diff, because we ran it underneath the sub, uh, underneath the rear subframe over and under. And I'll show you guys that in just a second. So, down here you guys can see now how we ran the rest of the airline you see here the rear bag we gave it a nice little kink like this nothing serious and follow the brake line and zip tied it to the brake line over to underneath the car um you can see where my hand is this is where the lines both lines for the front and the rear uh, ran right here and then you can see over the rear subframe and underneath here. Now the reason why we run it underneath versus in through it because this has really sharp edges on top and then they, they smooth out the edges underneath. So this will prevent the airlines from cutting holes into them. And then we pulled the grommets out, out of the rear and ran the lines in. Now we made sure that we ran the lines at an angle like this because if you run them straight up, they will cut into them and make holes into your lines. Uh, you can, if you don't want mind, 
You can wrap them in electrical tape just to add an extra secure function, but that's pretty much it for that. It's the same on both sides, identical. So you don't need to see the other side because it's exactly the same as over here. And both lines are ran together simultaneously from the rear bag over to here. We did a couple test runs and we did not see any rubbing. So we're very, very happy with that. Uh, my recommendation for anybody ever doing airlines, um, for any spot that looks like that it might rub when an airing out or actually when the car is moving up and down, focus on it. <clears throat> because you can run into an issue where you don't see it, but it happens multiple times. Hey, Juana. Um, happens multiple times and then it ends up running a little, rubbing a little tiny hole and then you're gonna lose all your air in that bag. Um, we ran it, we didn't see any issues. Um, so that's how we stayed. So hopefully you guys uh, see the, how we ran this um, and like the way that we ran it. If you guys have a different way of running this, please comment down below, definitely help us. Uh, we're gonna show you guys the trunk now. So we made a basic uh, frame for the floor to support the little plastic cover that's on the car here but it comes right out and you guys can see uh, it's a dual compressor we left all the wire and exposed on top and the main reason for this is for maintenance um believe it or not maintenance is a huge key to your guys' uh success or liability for your air suspension since it is a hidden suspension uh setup it's not a big deal um if you guys are trying to go more show all you have to do is pretty much make holes everywhere you want it and then route it underneath and you can hide everything. Everything can be completely hidden. I mean, it's, it's your guys' choice. We ran dual 444 um, CC compressors from Vier, uh, airlift, 3P manifold, uh, dual relays. Uh, everything's ran directly to the battery. Um, so very, very simple. Very, And I made a little ring for it to mount on all upholstered again it's not meant to be show quality it's meant to be functional so we use that frame to help support this plastic uh, cover just like that and so now he has a nice sturdy frame where this won't cave in and damage itself a uh, tank we upgraded the fittings from airlift to uh, much higher end nickel plated ones instead of the plastic stuff that airlift gives you it's a little bit extra expense but it's worth it for a more reliable airline we have a single water trap we're waiting for the other accessories to come in so we can finish the second water trap for this side and then we added a drain fitting down below and then the last cool feature in this car that i did for him i made a 3d print controller mount you guys can see that I made a little little place for it to sit in its uh, center console. It's all 3D printed to hold the 3P controller. Came out really, really cool. Very simple, very subtle, but it makes it easy for him to control it from over here versus a, just a controller just chilling here loose and can get damaged while moving around. All right, so that's pretty much it guys everything else is pretty straightforward uh, it's like installing a normal suspension on a car just with airlines and then running all the wiring um one last thing actually talking about wiring um let's actually show you that before i go any further because that was the last bit i forgot to mention to you guys All right, so here are the two main power wires for the uh, compressors. And then we have the two ground wires right over here. We grounded it right here to the chassis where there's another factory ground point in here. We do not, and I'm telling you guys this right now, do not ground to the battery, not smart. Only power directly to the battery and then ground to the chassis, never to the battery okay guys uh the grommet that we use to run the wiring is right back here um it's on the left of the brake right now the car is really hot it's on the left of the brake booster there's about a one inch grommet right there you poke it out with the uh flathead screwdriver 
and you're gonna have to stab it um, because there's a, a firewall material that's gonna be in the way you got to stab it so you can find it and it's underneath the steering wheel uh, to the right of the steering wheel um, you'll find it once you push the grommet through so all that and then the fuse that we used to um, pretty much power the controller is right down here now you have an entire fuse panel we found out that the uh, fourth one on the bottom the empty one that's on the bottom is a triggered 12 volt, 12 volt constant which is what we need so this one turns on and off and it's a constant 12 volts a lot of these have uh, 12 volts uh, that are triggered but they fluctuate in voltage which will cause an issue with your controller we want one that's a constant 12 volt so we found that the blank one um fourth one on the bottom to the right this one right here where i'm touching is a constant 12 that's triggered so pretty much every time you turn the car off it turns off every time you turn the car on it turns on and it stays on it doesn't um what's the word it doesn't uh, fluctuate in voltage it's just a constant 12 volts right here so this is the one i would use we use the little um fuse tab uh tap and cut it in half and crammed it in there and we were able to mount it just like that and it works beautifully and then we ran the uh the fuse holder right here just sits right up there just out of sight out of mind down there and that's it um the way that we figured that one out is by using a voltmeter set to obviously to, to test 12 volts um and it's again it's behind this little tray where you're i guess it's a little ashtray that's right here on the left side of the steering wheel what year is this car aaron 19. 2019 right yeah so yeah it's a 2019 subaru wrx uh so that's why how we figured it out um a voltmeter is key guys to this uh job because you need to find out on these newer cars they have digital and um optical sensors that fluctuating voltage they never have a constant 12 so you have to find the one that's constantly 12 or higher if not your air suspension will never trigger correctly will never air up or air out it'll just turn on but it won't trigger all the functions correctly so very very important use a voltmeter test for ports uh turn the car off turn it on make sure things stay constantly 12 volt when it's on and turns off obviously when you turn off the car and that's it all right guys we're going to show you guys some uh sexy footage in a little bit at the end some uh really cool aerial and shots later today so stay tuned for that as well peace out and have a wonderful day